Welcome back to my Colorado mountain garden. And I, since I'm going to be starting my seeds pretty soon, um, typically I use Espoma. Last year I did use some of the Coast of Maine seed starting mix. Uh, Espoma is easier to get, so I'll probably stick with that for this year. I just happened to be able to find it the other last year and thought I'd give it a try. I did not see a difference in my plant's growth at all. Um, you want to use a seed starting mix when you are starting your seeds because it's a lot lighter. It contains mostly peat moss. Um, and so the small roots of your little plants can poke through that soil very easy because it's very lightweight. Once you start up potting, you can start using your potting soil. You can make your own seed starter if you want. You do not have to buy it. And there's many videos on the internet on how to make it. I'm going to start this video though is more about how I care for my little plants and the problems that I could get. First thing is I sterilize all my soil and that is because you can get bugs in your soil. Your bag could have bugs in it. You, it's nothing that you did wrong. If you sterilize your soil though, chances are you won't have the fungus gnats and things like that while you're starting your seeds. Now, keep in mind, if you introduce seedlings, let's like say from the nursery, let's say you're not starting your own, you buy a bunch at the store and you are having to hold them because you can't plant them yet, those have been out in the elements and everything like that. So you're probably gonna start seeing some problems. Um, one thing that can happen, even if you sterilize your soil, is if you water too much or things stay damp too long, you can get mold. And one easy way to control the mold, and it's all natural, and is using ground cinnamon. I hope you can see this. Let's bring it up here. Now, you don't have to buy organic. This happens to be what was in my cupboard. Oh, here, here's the front part. Um, that's what I have. And you, what you do is just lightly put that over the top of your soil, whatever type of pot it is, if it's the small cells, a cup, whatever. And you also want to like slow down on your watering so it dries out. The mold will die off if you just let the top dry out. But if you have some really small little plants, like the ones up here on the bag, um, you may have to, you're still giving them more water or if you start seeing um, mold and stuff like that before your seed sprouts through, you want to keep the moisture going. But if you're seeing it that early, there's a good chance you're watering too much. But you can just lightly just take your fingers and get a pinch of cinnamon and put that over the top of your plant. Not your plant, your soil. And that will that will clean off anything that's going on in there but at the same time kind of reduce remember you never water from the top you always want to water from the bottom because that'll wick up and the bottom part will be wetter which is where your roots are going to start heading to versus the top if you get too much water and let's say you get the fungus gnats you can also use this on top of your plant soil there and it It'll help keep those fungus gnats down. They don't like to go through it. You get rid of the moisture. You get rid of the fungus. Then the fungus gnats don't come. I always, let me just move this out of the way. And you'll see them when we I do videos. I also always, because usually you may not see the first fungus gnat that shows up. I have these little sticky traps. And you, they just hang and I hang them on the side of my things um, that I put up. So if I do get fungus gnats flying around, typically they'll go to the yellow and I'll see it so I can start my preventative, whether it's going to be the, the cinnamon or something else. Um, my choice, and I'm going to go through this first, and then I'll give you some other alternatives for most of my pests is the Dr. Zymes, the amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator. This is an insect and fungicide. And even if I get 
mold or something, I can spray this on the soil and it'll kill it. If I start noticing I have fungus gnats, I spray this on the soil and I let it dry out. I'm not spraying it on the plant. The plant doesn't have a problem. Fungus gnats lay eggs in the soil and this will kill it. This is organic and you can use this even on the day you harvest. There's nothing in here that is a chemical that will kill you. There's videos out there of people spraying it directly in their mouth. I'm not going to do that, but um, Amazing Dr. Zymes I also use as a preventative. And this is going to be my fifth growing season using it. I started late 2017 because I had horrible aphids and I tried everything. And so I just got on the internet. I found this and I have not gone back to anything else. You will rarely, rarely, rarely ever see me put anything else on my plants for bugs. And I don't have very many bugs because it's meant to be used as a preventative. So that means I'm spraying about every seven to 10 days. And some plants like peppers and tomatoes, I spray, you know, on a weekly basis just so that I know that I'm not going to get aphids or anything like that. I grow in the greenhouses and hoop houses. I also grow outside, but usually where I get the aphids is going to be in the greenhouses and the hoop houses because it's warmer in there and there's a lot more moisture in the air. Colorado's pretty dry. So, you know, that's where it is. Now, this bottle here is a concentrate. It's got 32 fluid ounces and I use on the back, you can't, you're not going to be able to see it. I use the medium strength, which the medium strength, <coughs> excuse me, they recommend one to one and a half ounces per 31 ounces or 31 and a half or yeah, it would be actually 30 and a half ounces because if you're putting in a spray ball, you got to leave space for the water. So this 32 ounce bottle, it, well, let's say it's one ounce um, is what I'm doing, not one and a half, is going to make eight gallons of insecticide and fun fungicide. So this will last me for the year. And because if I don't have a lot of problems with bugs and I'm spraying just on a regular maintenance, I don't have to spray a ton. I'm, it's not like I'm dousing my plants every three days because I have bugs. Um, and I have not had aphids since I started using this product, at least any that I saw. Um, like I said, 2017, I purchased it after trying to use other stuff. And, well, I've never looked back. Um, it cleared up my problems, but my plants still didn't look that healthy. There's a lot of people out there that very much promote using neem oil, dish soap, things that contain oil. This product does not contain any oil, but you still want to spray it either early morning when it's really cool because you want it to stay wet for a while because it only works while it's wet. Once it, it's dry, it, it no longer works. Or in the evening, which is t typically when I do it. Um, it will kill aphids, fungus gnats, uh, white flies, mites, um, anything that ha is a soft bodied insect. So um, it's not going to kill a Japanese beetle. If you have Japanese beetles, you're going to have to, you know, most times just picking those off is going to be what you're going to be doing. Um, it does say on the bottle that it kills ants. Because an ant has an exoskeleton, basically, it's kind of like a beetle. It's not as, as hard, but I, I, I don't know about that one. I've never tried it on ants. Um, if I have an ant problem, once again, I'm using my, I'll use my cinnamon. And cinnamon doesn't kill ants. You're going to make a uh, basically a perimeter. Um, so either around your garden bed or around your greenhouse or whatever. 
And what that happens is that the cinnamon, they lose their sense of direction. The, the ant does. Um, I also use cinnamon around, uh, my hives are on stands. And so on a non-windy day, if I'm noticing more ants in there that I'd, than I'd like to see, I will put cinnamon down, not only around the legs of my hives, but also around the perimeter of my um, bee yard, which has an electric fence, but ants don't care about that. So um, very good for helping control the ants. Uh, let's see other things. You, a lot of people use dish soap and oil. Um, diatomaceous earth is another product you can use for aphids and things like that. Um, you want to make sure you're buying food grade and you want to wear a mask and gloves because basically what that is, is it's fossilized skeletons of marine organisms. And think about if you're installing insulation, those little things can be pokey. And that's exactly how they kill the soft-bodied bugs. So, you know, they walk through it, you know, and then they eventually die. Um, I've used that before, too. Uh, let's see, what other things can I think of? Oh, uh, for snails and slugs, you can use beer, use a beer trap. Um, powdery mildew, another issue that I have had before. I used to use a milk, um, solution. Again, you want to put this on at night. Um, you don't want your plants in the sun anytime you apply an oil. And so if you're spraying it, let's say you're spraying inside because you have bugs inside, you might get aphids inside. You want to turn off your grow lights after. It, you know, you can have them on while you're spraying so you can see what you're doing, but you immediately want to shut them off. And I would even run a fan to help move the air and, and, and dry up that oil and stuff like that before putting my grow lights back on the next morning. Oh, powdery mildew. I used to use milk. This works for powdery mildew and it works way better than milk. Um, this is not going to burn my plant's leaf. The only reason for putting it on in the evening, one is because my bees are in there during the day and they are a soft bodied insect, but it's because you want it to stay wet for as long as possible. So if you put it on at dusk, then it takes a while to dry. You're going to be spraying the undersides of your leaves um, on my cabbage. When As soon as I start seeing the little cabbage moths come out because they're here every year, I spray my cabbage and I don't have any problems with that, but you want to spray really good because it's going to kill the eggs. Um, I don't try and, if I see a moth, fine, I'll spray it, but usually you're trying to kill the eggs and everything because the eggs will keep producing more. You can buy ladybugs, um, although they're getting kind of pricey. I think now it's about $15.99. Um, and if you don't have enough, enough bugs in your garden, then the ladybugs go away but you don't want your plants to stay infested. And it does take them a while, even though they eat a lot. Um, same with praying mantises, they eat a lot. It's still there. So um, if you have a big infestation, once again, this is a preventative. I use it weekly on those plants that really tend to be more susceptible to something like an aphid, like uh, tomatoes, peppers, um, sometimes I, you see it on the lettuce, although usually I usually see flea beetle and stuff like that. And this will use work on the flea beetle. I do not get a kickback from the amazing Dr. Zimes talking about this. I get no money for it. I'm just telling you it has worked for me. The other reason why you want to stay away from the oil sprays as much as possible is because on all plants leaves. Okay. Plants leaves contain the stomata, which is basically how they breathe. So they take in carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, sorry, and they emit oxygen out. That oil is going to clog up the plant's stomata. And if you've ever used something like neem oil, you'll know that your plants stay sticky. So if you're spraying that, especially on small plants, you can kill your plant very easily. You might blame it on the bug, but it could 
very well have been the oil that you're using. Or if there's all that oil on it and it's a really hot day, your plant can basically burn. It gets something called phototoxicity, um, where it actually burns the plant or you're using it at the wrong strength. So always read your, your ingredients or read how to mix them up. And don't think by mixing it stronger, especially with something that contains an oil, that you're going to get a better outcome because that's not true. Um, let's see. Let me look at my notes here real quick, see if I passed up on anything. Oh, I don't think I did. I think I've got everything. Uh, pepper spray you can use for deer and rodents and stuff like that. It doesn't always work. Um, trying to block them away from your plants is the best way I've found. And I now have cats, so my rodent population went way down. Um, the deer can't really get to my plants because I, you know, I already take, have taken care of that. I think that's it for today. Um, we're going to start getting into, uh, me actually sterilizing some soil here in the next few days. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's very cold out here in Colorado. Um, I think our high today so far has been 12. So happy gardening and stay warm.